Now, good Saturday evening to you all. I'm Andrew Snicker in the KXA Live studio with Chris Tavares. What a night it was at Q2 Stadium for the home opener of Austin FC. And Chris Tavares, you were there. So take it away. What was that atmosphere like for you? It was awesome. It was really, really cool. And uh, talking to people afterwards, the thing that stood out to me, that stood out to everyone else, was the supporter section in the south side of the stadium. The, the Los Verdes, La Merga, um, all the different supporter groups that are there, they were just losing their mind the entire time. And it was, it was a sight. I, it was awesome. When Matthew McConaughey came out to lead everyone with the bongo and the Listos Verde chant it was it was so cool the whole stadium got into it and and that south supporter section was going non-stop the entire time constant drum beats to the point where when they'd stop for like 30 seconds you know and it, it something sounded off and then they were jumping up and down because the way that south part of the stadium is set up you can't sit down they've got yeah, locks they, yeah. on the seats so that way they don't come down so you have to stand up the entire time and every row has a rail so you can lean on and you can have your flags and everything, but they're they're up and they're rocking the entire time. And it was there was just an energy and electricity throughout the entire stadium that that you could feel. And it was it was really really cool. There's Matthew McConaughey leading the Listos Verde chant, and it was it was so cool. And like there it is. It, it was being there in person. Now I was opposite of them, so I couldn't hear the drums like right in my ear the entire time. But the, the whole stadium was getting into it, and it was it, it, it felt like a big moment. You know how sometimes you can just tell right. something is huge? That's what everything felt like at Q2 Stadium today because first major league home game for any team in Austin's history, finally getting its, its name removed from the, the biggest city without a pro sports team. Now, it's not one of the big four that everybody considers with that, um, with, with baseball, hockey, basketball, and the NFL, but it is Major League Soccer. It is as big as it gets in the United States, and, and the city of Austin treated it as such, and it was really, really cool to experience everything that went into it. So you're, when you did the live shots, you're, you're in the building. Obviously, you're watching it all. Uh, did you get to interact with any, uh, any of the fans? Did you talk to anybody about uh, just how they got there, what, what their what their stories were, or, or how anyone was feeling out there? You know, I, I ran into some friends afterwards, and I was talking with them. Um, they they were they got there pretty easily. They got there two hours before the match, um, but they they had a blast. They they had a ton of fun. Everybody that I was talking, nobody looked like they were disappointed by anything. The, the only disappointment was in the result of the game, it yep. being a nil-nil draw, but everything else just exceeded everybody's expectations. I, I ran into... A, one of our coworkers who works on the desk, Harley Tamplin, and he he said that it was fantastic. It lived up to everything that he was expecting. And he's I was gonna say you should say where Harley's pedigree. I mean he, yeah. he's he's a credible source. Yeah, he's he's English, so he, he follows <laughs> big time European soccer and he's the host of, of our show, Final Whistle ATX. So he's one of the analysts or hosts, whatever you want to call him. He he is big into soccer and he's been all in on Austin FC from the jump and he was so giddy. He, he's coming back to work at six six in the morning today, but he was out there as a fan, just enjoying it all. And he had this giant smile on his face that you couldn't wipe off. And that's that's everybody that I was seeing afterwards. They they were just so happy, so energetic, so enthused by everything that they experienced. Um, it it lived up because there was a ton of hype. Yeah. Leading into this, I've I mean, been waiting for so long. Exactly, like there was the MLS to AT or MLS to ATX movement, and then you had four years ago, Anthony Precourt announced that he was bringing a team, and then about two years ago, you had the naming and Claudio Reyna came in and Josh Wolf, and the first player signing started a little after that within the past year. So all this buildup and it it culminated in tonight, and. When you have so much hype coming into something, it's easy to, for it to, to be a letdown. It, it wasn't anywhere near that. It, it exceeded everybody's expectations. It was, it, it was an event. It was a place that people wanted to be. Um, and, and there was just this energy that, that was permeating throughout everything. You could tell it was a massive moment, and it, it was really, really cool to get to experience. I'm, I'm curious for you, because you were watching back here at the station on TV, how much did all of that come through 
on TV when you were watching? Oh, you could feel it. You could, from the very beginning, you know, we did a, a special pregame show that you were, of course, on uh, leading up to the start of the game on the CW Austin. And uh, so, you know, I walked out of this room and turned it on. And uh, to see, the first thing I saw was McConaughey with, with, the, with the drum. I'm, I know the name of it, but I, I'm not going to try. The heartbeat of ATX, I think? Well, La Murga de Austin is the, is the group. But, yeah. but the drum that he came out there on the field. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, You know, you could, you could feel that vibe. That, that's the kind of, you know, sports chills types moments. You know, a lot of that happens at UT football games when you experience something like that. But to see that... Uh, just through TV, it definitely resonated, and I felt like the quality of the game uh, was nonstop. San Jose has a lot to do with that, with the style that they play, but um, it was fast-paced. It was back and forth the whole time, and, and I felt like the, f- the fans, the crowd was into it the entire time. Tell me about the, the seating arrangements. It's it's twenty 20 plus 20,000 seats, mm-hmm. um, but you're right – how they described it is you're right on top of the pitch. I still haven't been out there to see it. So it, it, give us give us a good idea of, of the view that you get to see from there. There's not a bad seat in the house. Like none of the no obstructed sight lines. Yeah, and it, it's it feels pretty. It's big, but it it, it feels intimate. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, the south side where the supporters are is a pretty vertical. Um, I, the seats are pretty vertical. It's 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 a, a, a steep pitch, and, and again they have to stand up for the entire match. So that feels like they're right on top of you, and then the. From the the field, from the pitch to the the stands, there's not a lot of room because I was I was sitting on the field behind the the ribbon board that surrounds, and then their fans I I could have just reached back and touched them, um, so they're they're right there on the pitch, and uh, you know balls are flying into the stands uh, whenever they they leave the field to play, um, it, it's pretty on top of you. I don't know how suffocating it feels for the players. Um, certainly on that south side mm-hmm. where where Austin was going toward uh, for the second half, that is a, a pretty intense. Like you, you just look at it, and you can. It, it's an intimidating feel with the fans being right on top of you. But it is the, there's not a lot of space between where the fans are and where the where the players are, especially for inbounds or corner kicks. They're they're right there next to you. It's pretty cool. Did you get to go around before? So you were. Part of the special at seven. Did you get to go around pre pre match and and seeing the festivities or anything like that? Did they have a pretty good setup outside of the stadium as yeah. well? So we had the cakes and tent mm-hmm. beforehand, um, where fans were where fans were coming up and saying what's up to us. Everybody wanted to say and get a picture with Jim yeah. Spencer. Uh, we got so many pictures of Jim on <laughs> social media tonight. I think one person was like, "Hey, Chris Tavares." I was like, "Hi." Um, Did you get a picture? You didn't. He, he wanted a picture. His name was Sonny. He was a very nice guy. Sonny, so what's shouts. up, Sonny? Yeah, definitely. Um, shouts to Sonny. So the I, I didn't see where the the supporters march came through, but I saw them. They were on the northwest side of the stands. Okay. And they they just kind of set up shop. So they were opposite corner. We were both on the north side, but they were the opposite corner of the KXAN tent, and they set up there, and they're basically just practicing their chants and it was it was really cool to see and then at some point once I was inside the stadium I heard them come in through the south the southwest gate and start filling up the south side but wherever they go you can tell where they are because they're banging their drums and they're they're singing their chants and and their songs and they're making a scene everywhere and it's it it's very inclusive everybody's supposed to be involved with it with it and that's what they want like they they had cheer practices in the weeks leading up to today, and then the the that kind of pep rally that they had in the plaza, the Northwest Plaza before the game, I think is to kind of introduce the cheers to the fans. And I had people behind me, and I was sitting on the north side opposite the supporter section, and people behind me are picking up the chants and started dale 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 ATX. That was the the main one I was able to pick up. There were a couple others, but that was the one that was going going the most often. But they they want everybody to be involved. Um, but they they had their supporters march in, and then one of the cool things was they're in the south side and starting to fill that up, and then obviously the stadium's starting to get filled up, and it was about I want to say thirty minutes to to kick around seven thirty for for tonight's eight o'clock kick, and when the team first comes out onto the pitch for the warmups, and the stadium just erupted, yeah, and it was really really cool. I, I was just getting out of the elevator, walking to the press box. And I heard it, and I, I got to take pictures and video of it because it was 
really, really cool. And the players come out and they're they're acknowledging the fans and thanking them and supporting or for for their support. Um, it was really cool to to see and hear that because that was that was one of those firsts that you're waiting for, you know. Yeah, and t- tell us about so they they finished nil nil, um, which. At home, you're obviously looking for three. I thought this situation tonight was going to be tough just because of everything we've just discussed because it was so much more than just the game, uh, and the players feel that as well on both sides. Uh, San Jose hadn't played in three weeks, so they were rested or rusty, whichever way you want to look at it, but they they, they played well. Um, so now Austin FC sitting at nine points in nine matches. Uh, how do you feel uh, where this team is right now? How do, you, how do you feel that they feel about, about this result? I, I think... The sense I got, and I wasn't able to be on post game with them. Yeah, but a little disappointment that they weren't able to to cash in on all of this because I, I felt like they had more momentum than San Jose coming into this one, just because they had back to back draws against the top two teams in the West. Finally coming home, everything just kind of adding up to where this this was the moment for them that they they should have cashed in on. But I feel like there's just something missing on offense. And yeah, they don't have a finisher yet. They, right. they don't have someone that can finish in the final third. And they've got two DPs. They've, yep. got, they, they've got space for one more. And, and our friends at the Striker Texas, Chris Bills, after talking with Claudio Reyna, said that they are going out and they're looking for a striker. They're looking for an offensive weapon for that third DP in the summer signing window that's coming up here in a little bit. So I, I think when they get something like that, they'll really be able to finish things off. The, the, first, the first half of the match I felt like was – very yeah, much right Austin. Yep. Yeah, a, a whole they bunch of taken options. It right there. Yep. And, and, you know, looking at the stats, they finished with 19 shots, six shots on goal. And with just a few minutes left in the match, San Jose had four shots on goal. They finished with nine. They, they had more shot, more on-target shots than Austin had, but that's a credit to, to Brad Stuver, who, yes. who tied his again. career high again with nine saves. Corner kick after corner kick, while I was in the corner getting ready for my live shot, I just kept seeing him setting up for another another corner, another corner. And Stuver just had another fantastic game. And by the way, I, I said this in my live shot, Stuver is clearly a fan favorite. Oh, because, yes, he's got to be. Yeah. Yep. Ev- yep. Every save, you just kept hearing, Stu, they they were loving him. And, and he was loving it in return. And, you know, Jonathan pointed out in uh, in his story yesterday and on Friday night leading up to, t- to today, he's one of the lowest paid guys on the roster. Yeah, it was. He's a lifetime backup in the MLS. He's getting his break finally for the first time in his career after eight or nine years riding pine here with Austin FC. And he is making the most of his moment. Back to back matches with career high nine saves, keeping Austin in it. And, you know, I think this is three of the last, or of the past four matches that Austin has failed to score a goal. So that just shows you the defense is there, especially when you've got three draws. They've only had one goal, and that was against um, that was against Nashville. Is that right? Uh, Sporting KC. That's right. Last week, um, so you, you can tell that for as aggressive and as offensive as this attack is that, that Josh Wolf likes to play with, they're missing that one piece to to cash in on that. But the the defense is there, the goalie is there, so you get that one offensive piece, and I think you can really take advantage of this stretch where after Wednesday, their first midweek match at Minnesota, they've got six of the next seven at home. If you can get an offensive weapon to come in and really gel and buy into Josh Wolf, Wolf's system, I think you've got a, a great opportunity to really start racking up some points. Yeah, and you kind of hit on that. I, I appreciate you staying after after being out there all night and uh, and talking with us. Uh, I do I do have three minutes lined up of Josh Wolf's press conference, but uh, and we can we'll we'll call it right after the press conference. So uh, we'll wrap it up here. Wednesday night they play at Minnesota, seven o'clock kick. And that's on KBVO, which, uh, of course, if you go to KXAN.com, we've got all the, the schedule and we've got all the updates there on how to watch, where to find it. Different than tonight, because tonight was the CW Austin. CW Austin. Austin. This is yep. KBVO, where you watch high school football on Thursday nights. That's right. It is the, uh, it is the spot for local sports, for sure. Uh, so with that, you know, fun night. It's a historic night. It really is. And, and for, to be a part of it and to, for you to be there, that's, that's got to be uh, really special. Yeah, I definitely feel really lucky that I was I was able to be out there, be a part of it, and experience it all. And it was a, a, a night to remember for sure. I think the entire city will remember tonight. All right. For that, uh, we'll sign off. But first, to stick around. We'll hear from Josh Wolf uh, a couple minutes with just what he thought about the environment. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, we'll probably talk again before Wednesday. All right, Chris. Later.
trying to obviously use the fuel of the atmosphere, the energy. And, um, you know, I think, I think our guys handled that. We came in and, and did a decent job, had a good start. I think they handled it well. I think we knew, we knew we were going to have a packed house. We knew there was going to be a lot of energy in it. I think, um, you know, obviously they had a little different structure. So the first thing was recognizing what they looked like and our, our ideas and talking to the players, we want to come in and be aggressive. So we were pressing right away, trying to make it uncomfortable as well, but they're a good team and they'll challenge you. So um, right away, we were, we were trying to obviously use the fuel of the atmosphere, the energy. And, um, you know, I think, I think our guys handled that. We came in and, and did a decent job, had a good start to the game, I thought. And uh, it, it, was, it was back and forth. It was competitive back and forth. And there's uniquenesses to the way they play. And I think there's some uniqueness to the way that we play. And, and those two things clash today. And it's not always going to be aesthetically beautiful. But um, I think our guys' emotion and energy was, was pretty good from start to finish. And um, again, I think a little unlucky to not, to not get the three points, to be honest. I think, I think Q2 is exceptional. I think the fans, the community, the energy, the, 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 you know, the noise inside the, inside the stadium is, is, is impressive. And the players right away from the opponents, the staff from the opponents were, 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 were ex extremely um, complimentary of, of the whole project that we have here. You know, certainly the way that we play, but also the, the, the way that the game's been presented here, the support that we have. Um, you know, I think it, it reaches a, a lot of heights, you know, and I think that's, you know, that's something that we should all be proud of. You know, everyone in this community should be proud of it. This city is, 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 um, has the fever for, for Austin FC, has fever for the game, and it's, it's incredible to see. And when you come here and play inside that, again, the energy that our players felt and received was, was incredible. And I think in, in return, it's, it's about competing and putting forth the effort and, and really showing what the essence of what our club is about, the hardworking, the, you know, the determination, and, and, and hopefully the quality will continue to come. But, but we play a way that's, you know, that, that, that we believe is, um, is entertaining, and, and now we just got to sure some things up in front of goal but um it, it's incredible playing in q2 these fans the stadium is, is fantastic mm -hmm. i remember when i stepped out um right before the game started uh, i got the chills um it was something special i know they've been working so hard for it um i know the whole team was ready for it um and it's it's kind of sad that we're leaving as a tie because we pushed so hard they were singing so hard and uh, we wanted to give them more um but this it's like we said this is just the beginning we're going to make this a fortress. We're going to make this a place that no one wants to play here. Um, and the hardest part was listening to our own teammates giving us commands because it was so loud in there, and that's what we want. We, we appreciate everything they've, they've done.